Hello, this is Rick Patterson with the Handyman Homestead. Hope everything is well with you and that you are building something today. Well, today I'm going to show you how to build a chicken tractor. Let's get started. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is measure out uh, the, the sideboards. Uh, they need to be 48 inches. These are eight foot boards, but don't ever take anybody's word for it. I'm um, just gonna go ahead and make my mark right here at the 48 inch. Okay, I'm gonna show you just a couple of tricks uh, in the trade as a carp as a master carpenter. I've learned these skills years ago, but I wanna pass them on to you. So you have your option whenever you're going to use a skill saw. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is one, you can do it uh, just a regular way by cutting, making your line, cutting it with a quick square. This, by the way, is called a quick square. Take it like so, over your mark, mark it with your pencil, and you're good to go. Then you take your skill saw and cut. Well, that's one way. Let me show you a different way. And this is what uh, the advantage of having a quick square with you. You don't really have to go through all that measure of making the, the, the line and following it real carefully or anything like this. Basically, there is a zero mark right here. And uh, this is called the fence. So um, you wanna use your fence on the zero, like I'm doing right here and then take the quick square and hold it up quickly or widely. Let me do this here. I'm gonna widen this up just a little bit. So I'm gonna hold this, of course, move it off the table, and then I'm gonna just use my quick square as my, um, as my guide, okay? So here we go. All right, the first thing you're going to want to do, whether you put this on your driveway, uh, a porch, a patio, uh, even on just on the ground, on the grass, uh, make sure that you have a flat level area that you can work on. My driveway is a little sloped, um, moving uh, from here to here, but at least I have um, it, let me get my fingers in there. <laughs> Uh, it, it's uh, flat going this way and of course this way. So uh, lay out your uh, eight foot boards, the longer boards out. Lay out your 45 inch boards. Make sure that they are on the inside of your longer boards when you put this together. Then because each uh, two by four is actually an inch and a half, when you put them all together, uh, it's going to uh, literally be uh, 48 inches going this way, 8 feet going this way. So keep everything true. Make sure again that you place your 45 inch boards here inside. Now getting started, just a couple of things here. You're going to want a, to use a cordless drill. be much better. And then of course you're going to want um, a what I call a Canadian head and uh, just kind of uh, show you what that looks like. It's a kind of a star shaped, and um, these are what we call auger construction screws. So um, you, the deck screws, whatever you want to uh, call them, I call them construction screws. But um, the, the advantage for one thing is to have your bit here take, um, this is what I call a sleeved uh, bit holder. And then what you do is just drop the, uh, the screw inside, pull out the sleeve as far as it'll go, and then you can guide it in versus trying to hold it. Uh, oftentimes I have literally driven a bit uh, into my fingers. That's not fun, especially my thumbnails. I've done that before too as well. So you don't want to do that. So let's get started here. All right, so now that I've got this, I'm not going to worry too much um, as far as what I call um, level, or I'm sorry, not level, but uh, square. I'm just going to match up the edges, make sure that they're clean, and then drive my screw straight in. Okay, and you want to make it flush, all right? So there's my first one. So I'm going to do this all the way around. 
uh, when I get to my next one I will square it up and how you use a square is um, uh, let's see this is a um, 12 foot square there are smaller ones I like to use the bigger ones so you line it up because it's got a guide here on the sides just line it up and then um, take it to the to the edge and then you can move your board in or out either way you want to all right so now I have a half inch plywood that's pressure treated and I'm gonna go ahead and line up one side here get this corner straight this corner straight I'm not worried about anything else anywhere else because I'm not going to I'm not uh, ready to align it just yet I want to get this started so I'm going to use a two inch uh, construction screw here and just going to go ahead and anchor one side and I'm just going to use uh, two, uh, two screws for right now and then I'll line up the frame All right, now that I'm ready to line up the frame, I'm a little off over here. And so now I can make my adjustment to make everything square. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, I've got the top board ready. Okay, so all I'm doing is just anchoring it down. So I've got it over there, two points over here now on this one. I'm still off just a little bit. So I'm going to make that adjustment now. Okay, see if I can do this one handed. Okay. And then just get this corner here. You don't have to go all the way in, just get it flush. Alright, so now that I've got it anchored, I'm going to go ahead and secure it with some extra screws. So there's several ways to do this. I could have just framed it up and, and, and then put everything in. I'm going to do this a little bit differently. So I don't want any anything crawling under here from inside the chicken tractor. So I'm going to go ahead and take this, anchor it inside, get everything straight, flush. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and secure this edge now that I've got that flush. Go ahead and flush up this side. All right, so what this does, it adds to the stability of the whole framing. Now I'm ready to go ahead and do my uprights. So and square everything up there again. Screw that in. I'm, us I'm using a three inch screw. Now I use my quick square in order to make sure that this is perpendicular to my platform. So I've got both sides touching there. Just go back in here now and then screw, uh, secure this.
now I'm going to secure it from the other side. Now what I do here is just go ahead and move on to the next all four. Now just a quick tip here. Whenever you're working by yourself, your, your hands are full a lot of times and there's nobody to hold anything for you. So my suggestion is um, go ahead and anchor in your screws to the board that you're going to um, fasten. Then that way all you have to worry about is being plumb, things are straight and even, and then you can go from there. Okay, now what we're going to do is put in our cross bracing for the top. Now I've got everything secured at the bottom. So I'm using two by twos. Uh, this will make it a lot lighter, especially if you're having to drag it around your property uh, by hand. You'll appreciate this uh, a lot better and thank me later. All right, let's get started. Now here's a couple of tips here. One is I know that I'm going, I want, I want to run my cross member here at the top so what I'm going to do is just take a cutting from my 2 by 2 place it on the end flush make my marks here do the same thing here then that way I know that this is the edge of this 2 by 4 here now I am going to do uh, some carpentry skills in here a little bit and um, I will start right here. I'm going to leave it off about two inches. Again, I'm using a three-inch screw. Now what I'll do with the 45 inch is go ahead and put it in between, line everything up, and then secure it that way. Okay, so what I'm going to do here now is divide the difference on the inner part up underneath this 2x2 two two and this 2x2. Two two. So I'm 31 inches. That's uh, 15 and a half. So I'm going to take my mark at 15 and a half, and that's going to be center. All right, so I make my mark, and I put a C, that means center. I'm going to do the other thing all the way around. Now this time, I'm going to go ahead and make my mark, my line, all the way across, and I'll show you why. Okay, so now that I've got that, I'm going to take a clamp and put it just a little bit below and then my 2x2 my two two will fit there. I'm going to find center and raise it. It's pretty close right there. Alright, so I've done some scavenging. I had taken these panels, and I'm going to use my screw, drive, well, screw as, a, as a pointer here, but uh, we tore down a coop, an old coop, and saved the wood, just put it aside. I thought, well, you know, it's a lot of wood, I'll use it sometime. So this is the sometime right now. So uh, these are the two panels on either side. I had to cut them down to fit both, uh, all four quadrants there. Then what I've done is uh, put a 2x2 two two at the bottom here at the lip, and now I'm going to install a 2x4 at the top going across, and then I'll put my, my last piece going across there at the back panel.
Okay, so this is what it looks like from the inside. All right, so after I put the cross member in, I'm going to put a long roost here. And one of the things that I learned early in, in working with wood by myself, doing most of my carpentry work, I learned to go ahead and set the um, set the screws. So I'm going to go ahead and sink one in. And then set these two to get me started so everything's held, especially since I'm working underneath this board here. One thing I've learned about chickens, um, they need length to run. So they need this, this area right here without ducking their heads. So if I was to put cross members between here and here, they'd always have to duck their head, duck their head every time they walk the yard. So this is why I've done this uh, cross member long run here. And then of course at nighttime they had the option of roosting up here or roosting up here. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and run my first run all the way through with my uh, half inch by half inch chicken wire. Now to secure these, I am using a 9 16 staple for fencing. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, now that I have everything up, I'm going to go ahead and put one quarter inch by one and a half inch lattice up and just match it up and then cut it. So I'm going to go along the top not to go over the first section so I will probably run it to the edge here get that straight go ahead and I use an air gun just a brad nail a brad nail gun go ahead and set this So I'm going to do this all the way around on all three layers uh, and one side note I use the brad nail gun it's just got straight brads and um, the thing that you want to do is probably go every uh, six inches just to make sure that it's good and secure up against here it's already uh, predator proof but I'm just going to add a little bit more to that plus give it a nice finished touch now that we have the finishing touches on the caging, I'm going to show you how to water your birds very easily with an exterior water trough. Now what I'll do here is go ahead and uh, cut a hole, access hole from the outside for my connector. Alright, so my the estimation was a little off. I'm right up against that, so I'm going to move this whole circle over. Just a smidgen. I just want to get inside that, so I'll retrace it and go here and here. Now, what I'll do is take a jigsaw with my Ryobi cordless. Start right here and go all the way around. All right, that's a perfect tight fit. That's exactly what we want. And so let me show you from the inside how this looks. And if you see here, it's about um, six inches above, which would be perfect uh, as far as a waterer goes.
Okay, in this project, you're going to need uh, several things. All right, so let's get started. First off, you need a drill with a drill bit. Second, you need a jigsaw with a wood blade. The next thing you need is um, purple primer and regular cement for PVC. You need a poultry waterer cup, a three inch end cap, a three inch PVC pipe, a three inch 45 degree elbow. Let's start with inserting the poultry water cup. And I got this at uh, Tractor Supply. So they don't pay me, but uh, I do go there quite a bit. I pay them. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is insert this probably about, um, I'd say about three quarters of the way down. All right, so this is gonna be at a slant when this is uh, horizontal. Come be a little slant and that's okay. Uh, now with this, you're going to need a 3 8 drill bit. Go ahead and drill the hole inside there. Take the waterer. Just screw this in. Now I'll give you a close-up what this looks like. The profile, it's got a, a gasket right here. So take that all the way up as far as it'll go. And then what happens here is that once the water comes in, the chicken will see the little yellow trigger. It'll peck at it. Water comes out and it learns that this is where it gets its water source. Next thing we're going to do is put the purple primer both on the inside here. That's just to ensure that it sticks well. And then we'll do it on the outside. Be careful not to uh, get this on your clothes or your skin. Because you'll be wearing it just for a little bit. Alright, so that's all good and primed. Now on this I'm using medium gray. It doesn't matter uh, what color that you use on this because it's not really um, pressure sensitive or anything like that. So there's not going to be any, any big, big deal about this. I like to use the gray because it goes up to six inches on the diameter. And basically what you do here is just take it, push it on and twist it. And then hold it for about 10 seconds and you're ready to rock and roll. Now I want my cup to come out about 30 inches. I'll show you here in a little bit on uh, the finished product. So I'm going to go out 30 inches, make my cut, and then make my uh, connection here with the 45 degree angle. Now that I've got this cut, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with the priming and the gluing and then connect. Now I'm going to glue the upright first. And the reason I want to do this is because I want to make sure that I get my 45 degree upright first before I set the other one. So I'll just stick this on, push and turn to get a good connection. Hold it just for a few seconds. Now this is crucial. Um, I do want this tip to be sitting straight. I don't want it to be set at the side or anything like this. So I want this to be straight. I'm going to go ahead and make my mark right here in the center for straight. That way I know at this end what that looks like. I'll make it a little bit longer. So I just made my mark right here. I'm going to go ahead and glue and then set it.
it took a little bit of extra care, it's some TLC, but now there's my straight mark right here, and the pipe is straight. So for support, I'm going to put just a 2x4 block here, screw that in. Now that I've got everything back together, I'm going to make sure that my cup is straight. Got that. And then what I did was just put a zip tie to this just to kind of gird it up a little bit. And I'll go ahead and clip this off. So my next part of this, and the last part actually, is to have some sort of bracing right here. So what I'm going to do first is kind of mark where I want to go. Make sure the nipple is straight. Got that. Right there. I'm going to go ahead and mark it. Two sides. Then I'll run my screws through here. Actually, I'm going to do it the other way, just to, where I can have a visual. Now here I've got two blocks of wood, so I'm going to use my thin one first to run this through. Next thing I'll do is take a tie and I'm going to I might have to use two. I'm just going to lay my first tie just inside. Lay it right there on top. Go ahead and run my screws all the way through. Lay that back in here <laughs> just before. Go ahead and tighten that up, both screws. All right, that's good and tight there. And then I'll use one more tie to make sure that this is good and secure. Now that we got that secured, Let's go ahead and run zip tie. Started a little bit. Come around the other side. Secure it there. And secure it here. Now, one last note here, you don't want to leave this open, you want to have a cap or something. Um, I use what I have. What I've done here is just use a, a pot that you buy plants in, and I got some screen. I put a dot of glue on the inside, just lay this inside, and let this garden cloth act like a filter so put that on top of there and then you're good to go don't have to worry about a lot of debris getting inside because it will clog up the uh, nipple 
Now you can use a regular garden hose. This is what I'm going to do here. Um, for now that I know that I'm just using the garden hose, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that up. I'm also going to check for any leaks that I might have, add some extra glue. Then what I'll do is put the cap back on, and I'm good to go. Setting up for the application of the roof now, what I have is corrugated locker, and that's what I'm going to call it. And so I've gone ahead and put two of these together. They're plastic. I'm going to go ahead and secure the second one, not the first one. First one I need to go ahead and set with the roof on. Okay, so I'm just going to use decking screws, secure both ends, and a couple places in the middle. To secure the roofing to the corrugated, I'm going to call it a petition, just go ahead. You're going to use a 5 sixteenths drill bit and a 5 sixteenths roofing screw is what I call it. It's self-tapping. It's got a rubber gasket underneath and then of course a washer on top. So basically, all I'm going to do here is screw this directly in. So now I'll do this all the way around. Now what I've done is gone ahead and secured the top all the way down. Again, I'm using corrugated PVC. And so I want to make sure that there's enough on either end. I do have a lip on the door side. That's just to protect from water dripping straight down into the nesting box area. I want to keep it as dry as possible. So um, I've tested this. I just want to keep large uh, predators out. Um, so what I'm going to do is just do about every fourth one, put in a, a uh, secured screw, and then do this at both sides. So now I need a access to get inside. I was going to do one from the top, decided not to, too complex, I want to make this as simple as possible. So I made some initial flat curve starter cuts with my circular saw. Now I'm going to finish out with my jigsaw. Now what this will allow me to do is to get into, get the eggs or uh, toss in some, some feed uh, to do any kind of work that I want to do also on the water. So this is great. Now the next thing to do is to go ahead and set the latch and to make sure that the hinge, bottom of the hinge, does uh, not get into the uh, way of the door. The next thing I'm going to do before I install the door is put in a stop. So what I've done is just cut a one by one and put it uh, the whole length of the inside. And if I put this this right here, screw that in. This way I have. I have a way for my door to stop and not push all the way through. Now I'm 
just going to secure it for right now. Make sure that if you're holding on the inside and you're doing braids, you definitely don't want to put your fingers on the other side of that nail when it comes out because um, that won't be pleasant at all. So I'm going to go ahead and pack these a couple of times here. Do this down at an angle. And I'm going to sink a couple of screws here on the outside. Okay, I'm ready to install the door. Now what I did with the door itself, I just cut some one by ones trimmed out the inside, gave it a little bit more sturdiness, put some hinges on the bottom of it. So now I'm ready to set this. Once the door is set, we'll go ahead and run the hinges in. Go ahead and connect those completely. Now, once that's all in, everything's good there. The stop is at the top here. You're going to have easy access. I'm going to build some nesting boxes here. And um, I think we'll be okay with two. Uh, the rule is on nesting boxes, you want one nesting box for every three hens. So I will probably put just one in here, but I'll have a place for them to sit inside to get under cover and then of course to roost out that way and closing the door all i'm going to do is like i did here is put the latch in and then i'll put something across here to keep the door shut okay so the next thing i'm going to do here now this is the final part uh, i've laid out some what we call braided chicken wire i'm also using the same staples that I used earlier and so I've got it two feet out from either end and I'm going to overlap those uh, when I lay them down so what you want to do is just take your braid go underneath with the tongs of the staple and then just nail that in And so I'm going to do this all the way down and then all the way around. Now here's an example of what I've done on some of my chicken tractors. What I did here was just take some rebar, cut it about 12 inches, drive it down in strategic places all the way around. One thing you want to do though is make sure that you highlight these with some white paint or some sort of visible paint. Well guys, that's it for today on how to build a T-Lux chicken tractor. Hope you find this helpful. Please leave comments, ask any questions. I do reply to all comments and questions that you might have. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and share with others. Please share the love. Until then, build it, grow it, and or fix it. See you next time.